Athlete Training Center in Cranston, Rhode Island. At this point, if you've been following our videos talking about proper discus form and technique, you've seen that we've started in the back of the circle, and we've actually taken you step by step from the very back of the circle all the way through the middle of the circle, driving down that left sector line, landing in a proper power position. Now in the last video we talked about finishing that power position, actually having the weight all the way back over the right foot, the discus behind the right hip, and turning the feet, turning the knee and extending the knee, extending the hip, and releasing that discus. Today what we want to talk to you a little bit about is how to actually release that discus and what your left side, your blocking side, is doing. Now when we talk about the block, we have to think of it in a few different ways. The way that I always tell my athletes to think about the block is if you've ever seen one of the, uh, the footage of say a crash test dummy taking part in a you know, uh, national traffic safety crash test when a new car comes out. Basically, you've got a brand new car, got the crash test, test dummy sitting in the front seat, and they run the car right into a wall. Well, what happens? When you run that car into the wall, everything inside that car, whether it's the dummy, whether it's a passenger, whether it's a Kleenex box on the back shelf, everything else keeps going forward as the car hits that wall. And that's what you have to think of when you talk about your throwing events, especially shot, disc, jab is that, that blocking position. When people say they want to see a nice hard block when you throw, they're talking about that left side, the non-throwing side, actually coming to an abrupt stop, letting the implement and letting the right side keep coming through. Just like all that force of that car comes to an abrupt stop and the crash test dummy keeps going forward, we want our left side to come to an abrupt stop to transfer all that power across our body and let the upper body, uh, I'm sorry, let the right side of your upper body continue to come through and let that discus go. Now that's what we're going to talk about today is how you get that abrupt stop. Well, as I've already touched on, I'm a right-handed thrower, so my blocking side is actually my left side. So it all starts with that left leg and the left side of your body. As we're in the power position, as we're getting ready to throw, what's going to happen is as our feet turn, you'll notice that my left leg tries to stay as straight as possible. So as the feet turn, the discus stays back and we hit this abrupt wall. We plant the foot, we keep the knee nice and straight, and that's the first part. That's the first part of the car hitting that wall, is this abrupt bang, that stoppage of the left side. Now that we've stopped the left side and we're starting to extend the right, and we're continuing to extend the right, we have to talk about the rest of the left side, which is from your waist up. When we talk about the waist up, we're talking about the left side of your upper body and your left arm. Now let me show you this. The habit for a lot of people when they finish off the throw is that the knee stays bent and they blow through that block. When you hear people say that, that means that the left leg is not straight and there's no abrupt bang, there's no abrupt stoppage. We need to make sure that left leg stays straight. When you turn the feet, bang, that is your plant. That is the car hitting the wall. Now, as the left arm starts to come around with the upper body, this is the second abrupt stoppage. They happen a split second, a couple hundredths of a second apart from each other when you do your full throw. What happens, the left foot, the left leg is straight, left foot turns, bang, stops. Everything else continues to come around and you want to pull the left elbow in and down. And you can see what happens. As I pull the elbow in, it transfers force to my right side. You feel a stretch across the chest, and you feel that pull on that left side, and it transfers the power into the throwing arm. Now, in order to pull your arm in, it's quite obvious that the arm has to start back. 
So the arm's not going to be out here as you go to throw. The arm's not going to get lazy and hang down as you throw, because look what happens to my shoulders. Now I'm blowing through that block. We have to make sure that the arm comes around and pulls in and down. So I'll show you from the front. As the arm comes around, you want to pull that elbow in and down. You're not going to swing the elbow up because then you're going to be scooping the discus. You're not going to let the arm drag down because then you're going to fall over, lose your balance, and go on top of the discus. We want that arm to come around and down as quickly as possible. Now, the actual release of the discus, I'm going to show you something. If you can do this, let me come up real close. If you can do this, like if you're really impatient and you're waiting for something, if you can do that, you can throw a discus. We showed you in one of the videos, the first, uh, second video, that you line the discus up like a clock. As you go to throw the discus, the hand is nice and flat. But what happens is as it comes out of the hand, you're going to squeeze your fingers together and let it pop out of your hand. The way to think of this is if you can think of a bar of soap. If you're in the shower and you squeeze, that bar of soap will just boop and pop right out of the top of your hand. Your fingers slip off the bottom and it pops right out of the top. So you're actually going to be turning the fingers and getting it off that first finger. So when you throw and release, you're going to turn the feet and let that pinky ring middle first. Coming off that first knuckle of the first finger like we showed you a couple videos ago. Now there's a lot of stuff that we covered here. Hopefully it's some things that you haven't heard before and hopefully it's some things that you can take out to the circle tomorrow and help out your throw.